All right, what's on the bench today? It's a power supply. Uh, this was sent into the channel for a review. Um, this is a, a B-Side I84020. So it's a 40 volt, 20 amp. Um, B-Side makes several versions of this and um, they gave me a choice of which one I wanted. And so I told them that I needed the uh, 20 amp version because uh, that's kind of a place in my shop that I'm kind of lacking. I can go up to 10 amps right now, but um, this one goes up to 20 amps, so that'll be good for me. Um, so it's a nice little, nice little uh, form factor. I like that. Um, it is programmable. Uh, it's controllable with USB. And... Um, it has a nice, uh, like I said, nice form factor. One of the things I really like is it has a 5-volt uh, USB connector on the front for charging and doing things like that. So that's a, kind of a bonus. I like that. Uh, in the box, it came with a power cord, uh, some uh, uh, test leads, a USB cable, because like it is programmable. And it actually comes with the, with the software. When's the last time you saw a little CD? Uh, comes with a uh, the software to uh, remotely uh, use the uh, use the device. You can you can graph it with time and, and things like that. I'm not going to review this, um, but you can go on their website and take a look at the software um, how it's how it's being used and stuff. And it comes with a little user guide here. So let's um, let's plug this thing in and turn it on. <clears throat> So it turns on very fast, which is nice. Very nice display, nice color display, and um, very crisp. I, I do I do like the display. So um, it only has one knob, and so it's not really a power supply where you're going to be using the knob on the front to to do adjustments necessarily. Um, it's kind of more of a set and forget type of supply, but you can use it the other way too. So the way that you set the voltages is you hit the, uh, uh, the UI, which is actually VI. It's, it's, uh, it's either voltage, voltage or current. So you set the voltage and then you start turning the knob and you see that we're way over here in this digit. Um, but if you push the knob in, then you're in the second digit, push the knob in, you're in the third digit. Okay. Um, so, uh, there you go. So you, you can use the knob. So if you were doing a, a test, you could set this like to tenths and like be creeping up and down on it. So I, I guess it's okay that way. I'm a little bit cumbersome, but, but not too bad. But for 20 amp supply, I'm mostly going to use it as a sit and forget. And then if you go over here to current, uh, you can also adjust the, uh, the current, uh, limit. So it's constant current, constant voltage. You can also set an over voltage protection, which is set to 41 volts right now, or an over current protection, which is set at 20.5 amps right now. And um, so it shows you your set voltage, and then these are your measured uh, voltage and current. So there you go. You can also program some quick starts. You can, uh, I have uh, number one program for five volts, number two program for 12 volts, and number three program for 15. So. 5, 12, 15, those are common things that I use, so you can program those, and uh, the, you can program the current limits for each one of those as well. Uh, you can set the over voltage or the over current with that button there. Uh, you can turn the output on and off with that button. There's a menu button where you can set certain things. There's an address um, for the device, uh, serial baud rate, uh, oops, went away. Um, here are the memories, memory one, memory two, memory three. This is where you set them. So there, that's what the menu does. So I say we, uh, we hook it up. Okay, so the first major fail of the power supply is that the terminals are not set to uh, three quarters of an inch. This is standard for all power supplies, and this one fails. Now, there is some debate on whether this is done on purpose so you don't plug things that are like European and stuff. I don't know. There's some reasons why you might not want to do this, but everybody in the world makes their power supplies with three quarters of an inch. So I think that's a fail for me. I do not like that. Maybe I can move them in or make an adapter board or something someday so I can use these, but we'll have to use individual, uh, individual wires. Uh, 
All right, so you can use individual wires, like I say. Uh, I've got these nice clip leads that I, ju I just made with the nice alligator clips on them, or crocodile, or whatever you want to call these things. So let's go ahead and put a resistor on the load. Uh, we'll hook up a one ohm resistor. And uh, one ohm resistor is easy because then one volt is one amp, two volts is two amps. So let's go ahead and try it out here. We'll try it at five volts at one amp, we'll turn the power on and we get one amp of current compliance because that's how I have it set. So it's now in, in CC current compliance mode. Okay, so let's turn this off. Let's go ahead and set the uh, uh, current compliance uh, up to its maximum, 20 amps, and then we'll hook up the output. So there we go. Um, uh, or, uh oh, so we had uh, five volts at five amps. <laughs> and uh, that's 25 watts and we just smoked our little resistor so we're gonna need a bigger boat <laughs> how about that one <laughs> how about that <laughs> I just did this for fun um, so we have a 1 amp <clears throat> 5 amp 20 amp we need a bigger boat so this is our 1 ohm resistor <clears throat> this 1 ohm resistor is 250 watts um, I'm sure it requires a heat sink at 250 watts also, but right from the get-go, it's, it's a pretty beefy, pretty beefy resistor. So we turned it on, and uh, now we're getting our five, our five amps. Five volts at one ohm is five amps, right? Five volts, five amps. Um, so there's some drop in the leads, and the resistor is not exactly one ohms, but we're getting 4.88, right? All right, so we could uh, go to our 12-volt setting at one amp. We're going to max at one amp, <clears throat> so we will have to increase the current compliance. Let's do that. And turn that on. So there we go. We get 12 volts, 12 amps. We're doing good. All right, let's do 15. Let's hit our current compliance, make that, make that max. Turn that on. And there we go, 15 volts, 15 amps. So yeah, it's a, it's a nice it's a nice power supply for uh, for what I'm going to be using it for. Yeah, my resistor is still dead cold. <laughs> How much? We're putting in 220 watts. So yeah, see, it's measuring watts too. That's nice. So we've got 220 watts going into our 250 watt resistor. It's just starting to go above room temperature now. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Um, so I do like the power supply. It's going to come in real handy. I needed I needed one real beefy for working on um, ham radio stuff, uh, which oftentimes uh, draws lots of current at uh, 13.8 volts and things like that. So it will come in handy for that. Um, instead of using the knob, you can use the little arrows. You can do it that way if you like. Um, yeah, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice little supply. Let's take a look inside and see how its uh, how its construction looks. All right, uh, man, those screws were hard to get out. They were Loctited in or glued in or something, but they were really hard to get out, so that's good. Not gonna come loose on you. So uh, here's the insides. Um, we have uh, some 3M tape here for the shroud that goes over the fan. So they have a ducted, ducted fan, uh, which is a nice touch. Um, let's see what's inside here. They have um, the little USB connectors on a board that comes in. Everything's cable tied. Uh, feels nice and stiff. Um, we've got some big capacitors here. 200 volt, 680 microfarads. So let's see. So the power comes in. There's a separate little board here that probably powers up the... Uh, the front panel, uh, yeah, five volt, two amp. So it's a, there's a tiny little five volt, two amp separate power supply all by itself right here, a little switcher, um, and then the main main power supply. It's so nice if they separated the two. Um, looks pretty good quality. Uh, there's a, some uh, front panel. There's some elastic on that one. Um, yeah, so far, let's take a look at the ground wire. The ground wire, ground wire comes 
out and goes to <clears throat> goes to here. Um, I know that some people probably would like it going to the chassis, uh, but it does go through the chassis through through this piece. So kind of a one stop here onto this piece first. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Yeah, the output has a, has a bunch of uh, filtering on the output. Uh, so these are all, let's see what value are, the, are these. Um, these are 30, 3300 microfarads. And you got one, two, three, four, five of those. So really nice filtering on the output. Um, yeah, I have good things to say about the construction. That looks, looks like it's done quite well. Yeah. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Now that the, the uh, internal heat sink here. Yeah, so there's a... Uh, the big pass transistors and uh, uh, bridge rectifier and stuff are on these screws here. So this is this is a bit a big heat sink. So the fan blows right onto it, and then there's a uh, louvers on the side to get the airflow. So that seems to be done well. Uh, the fan doesn't run all the time. The fan will kick on when you go to high current. Uh, so that's always nice. All right, I like it. So um, if anybody is confused, it says 40 volts, 20 amps, but it will not do 40 volts at 20 amps. That would be 800 watts. Um, the supply itself is limited to 300 watts. So you need to do the calculation. So it will limit itself to 300 watts. Um, so at 40 volts, it will not do the full 20. Um, and uh, at lower voltages, it will do the full 20, but it's limited to 300 watts total. So there you go. Uh, that was my review of the B-Side i8-4020.